Good morning. <sighs> Democracy is really annoying. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm sure that many of us in this room have had many frustrations with democracy. I am sure that just about everyone in this room could go on ad nauseum about a government, electoral politics, but that's not what I am talking about here today. Let's zoom in a bit. Many of us have been or are a part of boards, work groups, committees, things of that nature, perhaps even a committee at this very congregation. And your group has to come to a decision. And you feel very strongly one way about this decision. And others perhaps feel very strongly in another way about this decision. Maybe you're one lone voice of dissent in this decision. Maybe things are a little more divided among the group. Things reach an impasse. Maybe you get overruled. Or uh, maybe the group works out one of those uh, most terrifying of C words, compromise. It can be frustrating. Let's zoom out a little bit. Sometimes we have to make decisions in larger groups. You know, one or 200 people something the size of like an annual general meeting. Many of us have been to one of those. They can be positively infuriating affairs at times, can't they? And often it comes down to one thing, one frustrating, confusing, beautiful thing, procedures. In small groups, board committee sized groups, you can be more informal, more consensus based in how you practice democracy. Fewer folks in the room makes it easier to have more in depth discussions, hash things out person to person, come to the C word compromise, or its kinder cousin, consensus. When groups start getting bigger, these more informal forms of democratic decision making break down a little bit. It's harder to have everyone just break into conversations when you have 100 people in the room. Things can drag on in circles forever and ever because this person has something, then this person, and this person, and this person, and it's a hundred people doing that. And I know that this has happened in committees on the scale of seven people, and it can be a little... But uh, you reach a point where you need some tools to guide the conversation, to facilitate the democratic process. And very often, that tool is Robert's Rules of Order. And Rob's Rules has definitely generated its fair share of frustration. For those who aren't as well versed in Robert's Rules, uh, it can understandably be frustrating when proceedings delve deep into the procedural weeds, as it were, when we're voting on a motion to call the question on an amendment to an amendment to a motion that had previously been divided into multiple questions. And just when it seems that we are finally getting out of the procedural weeds, we are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, we are 
dragged right back down into the weeds by someone who moves to table the motion or some other procedural shenanigans. On the other side of the coin, there are those who are well-versed in Robert's rules, uh, watching the rest of the group uh, struggle through these complicated procedures and becoming frustrated because it's not that hard, folks. It's just a two-thirds majority vote, non-debatable motion. No, you can't amend it. You can't amend it. Uh, what, you didn't read the 857-page rulebook cover to cover? I have many times been the latter. For the unaware, I have the privilege of serving as the parliamentarian for the Canadian Unitarian Council, the CUC. The CUC is an organization which our congregation is a member of that serves the broader nationwide Canadian Unitarian Universalist community. My role as parliamentarian is to be the Roberts Rules expert in the room, particularly for the CUC's annual general meeting each spring. Though I occasionally give procedural advice to the board and staff, to congregations around Canada, uh, I have read the 857-page rulebook cover to cover. And uh, God help me, I love Robert's Rules. <laughs> it gives large meeting structure, it allows everyone who wants to be heard, to be heard, and it allows discussion to come to a definitive end without dragging on pointlessly. It's, it's a chunky manual, it's like this big, and it lays out rules for just about any occasion. Any edge case, any situation that comes up, the book has some rule, some procedure, some answer for the predicament. And there's a, there's a little corner of my nerd brain that secretly loves it when things go wrong because then I get to find the answer. <laughs> but isn't it kind of strange that we are making these important decisions the decisions about what we as a faith community want to do or even who we are using an 800 page manual. A rule book so hideously complex that we need to have experts in the room who advise the meeting on how to follow the rules. The CUC had its most recent annual general meeting over the May long weekend. It was my fourth general meeting as the CUC's parliamentarian, and it was my first time performing the role in person. Previously, I had always done it over Zoom. This time, I actually went in person to Ottawa, attended the symposium, but before the symposium proper began, we had the meeting. Things did not go entirely smoothly. Uh, ours is supposed to be a living, breathing religious tradition. And there is a very strong argument to be made that Rob's rules are unnecessarily complicated to the point of hindering the very thing that they were designed to facilitate democratic decision-making. It is an inaccessible tome of a book filled with more detail than is perhaps necessary. Details that hinder the uninitiated and that can be weaponized by those in the know with malicious intent. I am of the opinion that we do need 
a tool to facilitate this larger scale, you know, AGM sized decision making. But I think we need a different tool than Robert's rules. Something to give meeting structure, but something that is more accessible. Something that isn't 857 pages long. It pains me to say it because I do love Robert's rules. God help me, I love Robert's rules. But I think it may be time to put them aside in favor of something else. What something else? I don't know. I don't know what that something else is. Right now, the CUC has a decision-making exploration team that is trying to find that something else. And I eagerly await their results. Because democracy is annoying, but it's also beautiful. People coming together to make decisions for ourselves. Each voice contributing, being heard. We should think about how we make these decisions together. Everything from the smallest scale to the largest, from you and a friend to deciding what movie to see, to how we run an annual general meeting, to even how we govern a country. Bringing us back to our reading, Shia French said, each and every time we make a decision with another person or group of people, we can practice democracy. What does democracy look like, that is for us to decide.